Hi guys and welcome to another episode of JDM Masters Mini Car Reviews. This is a, a Honda Accord Euro RCL7 Mini because we can actually drive it out but we're going to talk a little bit about it. So come join us. Now because a lot of you have mentioned in the comments how you wanted us to review this car, that car and one of the popular ones after we reviewed the Honda Civic Type R FD2 belonging to our friend Masa in the little video over here. Um, some of the comments said, please review Honda Accord Euro R CL7. And fortunately, when we are here now in Spoon Type 1 garage, you can see in our last video, we talked about the EG6 race car over here. They happen to have a used car, which is for sale. And this is the Accord Euro R JDM version which was only available in Japan. So let's talk a little bit about it. Now, the Accord Euro R is a high-spec version of the 2003 Honda Accord, which was a world model base. And in America, I, I believe it's called the Acura TSX. But in Japan, it's just an Accord, but they had something called the Euro R, which is the second generation of the Honda Accord Euro R CL1 with the H22 engine. Now this was actually a little bit different in concept. It shares the same K20A engine with the EP3 Civic Type R and the Integra Type R DC5. But that's just about that. Everything else about the chassis is completely different. Compared to the previous model CL1, the total length is actually about less about 10 centimeters shorter in overall width and because of the newer design with the higher bonnet line and sloping roof line going there, it actually looks shorter than uh, even the FD2 Civic but in reality this car is still a lot longer by maybe 12 centimeters than the FD2 but it manages to look very compact and very sleek and this is still one of the better and well beloved designs of post 2000 uh, Hondas very very popular in Europe and it's accentuated by the streamlined long headlights, which kind of looks like something from the Honda Odyssey. And there's also a wagon version of this, uh, but it never came with the Euro R spec. So what exactly is the Euro R? You see the R shape is actually different from the Type R. So this is not a Type R, but it has the same Type R engine. But the Euro is a little story about the name the Euro. Back in 1998, um, the European version Accord had something called a uh, Accord Type R, which had the same engine as the Prelude Type S. And it was colored in championship white, but the ride and the handling was more like a BMW 3 Series M3, sort of like a grand touring style. And because it wasn't actually as hardcore as the DC2 Integra Type R, the Japanese version of the CL1, they called it the Euro R, which had European setting suspension. So that is the name used for this second generation. The suspension settings are more towards comfort and highway cruising. So it's not really a Type R, but it does have very good road handling capabilities. Now, if we can take this on the road, you'll understand why. Let's have a look at underneath the bonnet. Oh, this is pretty heavy. So this is steel, not aluminium. Honda rarely uses aluminium for their road cars. Um, maybe it's a safe cost, or maybe the cars are already light enough that it doesn't need these exotic materials in order to, to bring the cost a bit down. So let's have a look here. K20A Spec R red top engine. Uh, this is this looks very similar to the DC5 Type R and the EP3 Type R, but there are some small differences. The intake manifold is slightly different in shape and in the crankshaft there's actually a balancer shaft in order to make the engine a lot smoother. Now that goes very much in line with the Euro R badge because it's not designed to be a track car. It still has the 220 horsepower from a 2 liter IVTEC DOHC engine but the balancer shaft gives it a much smoother range and a revving of the torque to, uh, that comes out and it's still mated to the same six-speed manual transmission gearbox with an LSD. So it could be the best of both worlds. You have some sort of high-power Type R uh, characteristics with a 
very Turing compliant body. Now this is where it's different. Look at the strut mountings on this. It's very similar to the EG6 that we just previewed earlier. Offset a little bit because this is not a MacPherson struts like the EP3, the DC5 and the FD2. It still retains the double wishbone suspension that's carried over from the previous model. It's also used on the older Civics and Integras. So it's a higher premium grade kind of suspension setting. In fact, Spoon themselves uh, campaigned a racing CL7 Euro R uh, in the mid 2000s. Uh, they raced it in American Thunder Hill. You can see from reference photos here simply because the double wishbone suspension gave a better range for handling and more, and, and more precise setup uh, for suspension geometry than the DC5 and the EP3. The advantages of that design combined with the rear 5-link uh, makes it a very interesting package. Uh, in fact, in the best motoring review done by uh, Motoharu Kurosawa, he said that this is the kind of car that, you know, uh, is the perfect middle-aged family man's car. You, so you, you know, you've, you've junked your boy racer car and you got two kids, a wife, and but you still want to enjoy that kind of spirited driving, this could be the perfect one, the perfect thing, because inside, driving it, it's very, very luxurious. Let's have a look inside. Okay, and this is a lot of space. Uh, I'm gonna measure with my fingers here the distance to the front. Maybe compare with FT2? The FT2 that we compared in our last video, I think this is a little bit more, it, or if not, it actually feels the same. But what's different is the higher grade interior plastics and the trim now obviously the Accord is a rank higher than the Civic so even the rear seats compared to the Civic FD2 is much more oh it's very comfortable headrest is a bit higher and you can tell this is just you know a very nice family car the materials uh, ultra suede just like in the other Type R's with a very nice mesh um, and a subdued grey pattern but we have a center armrest with two cup holders, unlike the FD2, which is meant to be like a family boy racer. Um, proper three, three-seater at the back. This is really a nice place to be in. In the front, there are Recaro SPJ seats, uh, which are actually exactly the same design as the previous CL1 model, and also incidentally same as the Evo f uh, 5 and 6. And compared to the SR3 and 4 series, the side shoulder support is a little bit soft here, but because this is designed more for sports cruising, um, it's actually way more comfortable with the lumbar support and also this, the seat down. It's just perfect for the little bit of spirited driving. So the dashboard uh, is very nicely laid out. This is the JDM Honda Premium Navi Sound System. The only bad thing about the CL7 generation is you had either this, which is integrated into the dashboard, or you had a cassette player and there was no option to put your own two-din navigation system. You had to buy another kit. So this is the only annoying thing difficult about this generation. Down here, uh, because it has the Navi system, the HDD, the PC card, which is going to be quite difficult to change. So we have the six-speed manual here. This is actually a knob from the, I believe this is titanium from the NSX Type R. This is aftermarket uh, Alcantara, six-speed cable shift, which is pretty much the same as the DC5. And also this is aftermarket yellow stitching, very nice, upgraded. Spoon steering wheel, uh, it's not the normal ones. Turn on the ignition, ooh, nice display. Uh, with high legibility. This is one of the points that makes it a little premium looking also right here. Overall, uh, you can tell that the interior is just a higher grade uh, compared to the, to the Civic. The typical things uh, like you've got the map reading lamps, one sunglass, it's quite, quite standard, you know, in, in cars post 2000. Oh, but this is something that I really like. Mirror with an automatic light. Um, very useful for the missus who wants to check her face and makeup before she goes for a nice dinner. Um, nice aluminium brushed here and the doors shut with a very nice quality thud. So thumbs up for the interior for sure. So let's see how the Accord Euro R CL7 feels in comparison to the Civics. And um, 
starting it up. Ooh, that familiar K20A sound. Everything is normal on this car. Just moving it forwards, clutch is very easy in operation. Very much like a comfort car. It feels a lot like the FD2 of Masters that we reviewed before. Um, it also has the organ pedals, which is very interesting. And it actually makes modulation of the clutch very, very easy. Now coming to the rear, this spoiler is not stock. It's a aftermarket Mugen kind of a ducktail spoiler. Mm, maybe it would look better without it. It's a nice sedan shape. Uh, without a spoiler, it would probably look a lot cleaner. But what is interesting about the rear taillight design, it's got the same height as the front taillight. So it's kind of streamlined and you have the Euro R emblem here, which signifies its grade. It also has the Mugen twin um, mufflers and this is titanium yeah you can tell from that from that sound one of the good things about the Accord over the Civic is of course the huge trunk space materials used over here and the cover used for the for the latches coming in hiding this inside you can already tell that this is at a higher grade than the Civic very deep uh, space you can put just you know all the overnight bags this latch is to pull to drop the seats there we go like that inside so this is a useful thing about the Accord Euro R versus the Civic Type R FD2 Civic Type R FD2 can't drop the rear seats so it's still usable and very useful for family sedan here you've got the spare tire and the jack as usual something we really like about um, so that's like a very purposeful all-rounder. So the refurbished car that's now being sold by Type 1 has a few upgrade parts from the normal. It's got the uh, Spoon LSD, fully adjustable suspension, and very important and iconic Spoon 4-port caliber mono brakes and new discs. So the brakes have always been a weak part of the CL7. So uh, it's a heavy car, almost 1.4 tons, and you know, it's not a race car, but having these brakes, uh, brake calipers do give it that more confident bite um, that would probably match it to the Brembo's that is available on the DC5 Type R. So guys, that was a very quick mini review of the Accord Euro R CL7. Unfortunately, we can't drive this thing out. If we have a chance, uh, we can find an owner with a CL7, we can take it out on the road into the mountains. Uh, that would be absolutely awesome. But if you are watching this video and you are in Japan and you would like to buy a very clean CL7 Euro R refurbished by Type 1 Spoon. Um, let us know in the comments. You can contact them directly. And it's really, really nice. Maybe I should get one. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And let us know in the comments what other kind of cars you'd like us to check out or review or check out in this workshop. And until the next episode, we'll see you. Peace out.